So name of this reading is Returns, Spreads and Yields. So it's a relatively easier re reading to handle out of all the Tuckman readings that we have in the syllabus. This reading covers uh, or repeats a lot of concepts that we have been saying throughout uh, financial markets and products. So if you are reasonably okay with those concepts, uh, this reading should not be very difficult. So this is a summary of all the learning outcomes. Number one, differentiate between the gross and net realized returns. Calculate the realized return for a bond over a holding period, including different assumptions of reinvestments. Then we would learn the spreads of the bond. So they haven't really specified which spread, but we know now that there are there could be Z spread or nominal spreads or G spreads or OAS. So they have a more generic discussion on what spreads uh, about the spread. Then the concept of YTM, which is a repetition. Then bonds YTM given structure and price. Then price of an annuity, price of a perpetuity, simple time value of money. Relationship between spot rate and YTM. Coupon effect, relationship between coupon rate, YTM, bond prices. This is a particularly interesting learning outcome where we decompose the p and L into three parts. So we decompose that into carry, then rate change and the spread change. And then some of the assumptions with respect to the carry roll down. So that's roughly the structure of the reading. Let us start with gross versus the net realized returns. Okay, so give heading in the notes. Gross returns versus net returns. Now, let us say this is uh, time 0 and this is time 1. Now what you did is you invested into a bond an amount of 99 and you decided to exit from that position at time point 5. So at this period, the price of the bond was 101.5 plus you received a coupon payment of 2, assuming semi-annual coupon rate. So we want to find out what is the gross return that we have been able to earn on the bond. And you can think of this number as simply the holding period return, HPR. So we would say how much are we really earning? So there's a capital appreciation component of 1.5 plus the coupon component of 2 and the amount invested is 99. So whatever that number is, that is your gross returns. Now let us assume that this 99 was actually a borrowed amount. Right? So we know that a lot of bond dealers would borrow this amount and then they would park into funds. So this amount was borrowed and the cost of borrowing, let us say was 0.9% per annum. Just making a hypothetical assumption. So if it was 0.9% per annum, then your net returns would be calculated in this fashion. We will say net returns, which is again holding period return, considering that investment amount. Now, logically, if you borrow 99, your investment amount is zero. You did not invest any of your amount, but the convention is to still have 99 in the denominator. So we will say 1.5 plus 2 minus half of that 0.9 percentage and then whatever this number comes out to be. How much was the first number? 2.52. So this would be 2.07. Have you understood the intuition? In one case we did not, we did not uh, capture the borrowing cost. Right? So therefore we said the gross return. In the second scenario, we are taking care of the borrowing cost as well. Therefore, we have the net returns. Now, next heading in the notes. Impact of reinvestment assumptions. Okay, So let us say we have a bond with a face value of 1000. Coupon rate 10%. I am creating a very simplified example. YTM 10% and maturity is 4 years. Let us make an assumption, this is scenario 1, that all the coupons were reinvested at 10% itself. 
Okay, we are making a hypothetical assumption that all the coupons were reinvested at 10%, and we would want to know what would be the realized yield on these investments. That means how much have we actually been able to earn? This is time zero. This is time one. This is time two. This is time three. This is time four. The cash flows that you've received is one hundred, one hundred. 100 and on the last day you will receive 100 plus 1000 now the assumption is that we are able to reinvest all of the cash flows at the rate of 10% so this first 100 here that's reinvested for how many years one year so that would become 110 this 100 is being reinvested for how many years two years so that should be 121 and this 100 is being reinvested for 3 years how much would that be 133.1 so can i say that it is equivalent to being able to receive all the cash these cash flows at time 4 correct and what was the what was the price at which we had purchased this bond since it was a par bond we purchased this bond at 1000 Now let's take a total of all these numbers. So eleven hundred plus one one zero plus one twenty one plus one thirty three point one one four six four point one. So the way I'm going to read this number now. At time zero, we invested one thousand, and at time four, we received one four six four point one, not receiving anything in between. with an assumption that the cash flows were reinvested at the rate of 10%. Now let us find out the realized yield in your TVM row second clear TVM 1000 present value 1464.1 future value 4 as n compute iy is it again 10%? So because all the coupons were invested at the rate of ytm itself you realized yield and the ytm were same now if you do not want to use tvm row formula would be 1 divided by 1000 raised to 1 by 4 minus 1 which should again get you 10% what if the reinvestment at 10% was not possible and what if we were able to invest only at 5% then the entire set of equations now are going to change so let's see now what happens so your first 100 here the one which is coming in year 3 so here we are receiving 1100 this 100 will become 105 this 100 which is invested for 2 years will become 110.25 and this 100 how much would that be 0.76 so let's take a total of the cash flow that's available with us 14301 so how do you read this you would say that you you invested 1000 at time 0 you did not receive any cash flow at up to time 4 and at time 4 you directly received 1431 with an assumption that the coupons were reinvested at 5% and now let's calculate the realized yield so 1000 negative present value 1431.01 future value 4 as n compute iy or the formula is or the formula is 1431.01 divided by 1000 Raised to one by four minus one, which is nine point three seven percent. And is this less than the YTM? Yes, because your reinvestment rate was lesser than the YTM. Let's write down two or three testable sentences from the theory questions perspective. Number one, this point you already know. YTM assumes. Tell me, all the cash flows are reinvested at YTM. YTM and IRR is the same concept. Are you convinced with this? Second point. Now this is where I believe there could be questions on the exam. 
if reinvestment rate is greater than the ytm then realized yield would be greater than ytm in the same fashion if reinvestment rate is less than ytm then realized yield is going to be less than ytm next heading spread of a bond now i'm going to define this spread in the context of how it has been defined by the original author in this particular chapter so let us say we have a bond and how do we find out the price of the bond so we will say let's say this is first coupon second coupon and the last cash flow let's say is face value plus the coupon now if you are valuing the bond using a forward rate mechanism using a forward rate curve then you will say 1 plus the forward rate of year 3 into 1 plus the forward rate of year 2 into 1 plus the forward rate of so this is nothing but the spot rate of year 1 then this bond would be valued as 1 plus the forward rate of year 2 into 1 plus the spot rate of year 1 and this would simply be 1 plus the spot rate of year 1 now what you do is you use this forward rates based on the treasury spot rate curves okay but you are valuing you are trying to value a risky bond using the forward rates derived from the spot rate curve so of course your valuation will not match so then what is the rate what is the spread that should be added to each of these rates in such a way that the equation tallies that has been defined as the spread in this particular learning outcome that means the spread that you are earning over and above the forward rate curve in previously when we saw a spread in financial markets and products we call that spread as z spread and then that spread was the spread that you earn over and above the treasury spot rate curve here you are earning a spread which is over the forward rate curve the concept is same but that's how the original author has explained this in the original text